So we've talked about how to do volume by slicing. There's another thing we can do, which is volume by shells. So let's take a function, and instead of spinning this function y equals f of x around the x-axis, we're going to spin it around the y-axis and get a shape something like this. Well, if we sliced it this way in terms of x, it's not going to work well because our cross-sections well, they won't be circles, will they? So the washer and disk method, the cross-section had to be circles. So if instead of slicing it in terms of x, if we sliced it instead around y, you can see that the upper part, we're going to have to use a washer method, and then once we get below a certain point, then we can switch to the disk method. So anytime we can avoid doing things in two separate integrals. We try to do that. So let's look at what we could do instead. So if we take the same kind of slice that we got last time, but instead of this being spun around the x-axis and making a disk, this is being spun around the y-axis. And the shape that it's going to create is, well, like the outside of a cylinder, like the outside of a soda can. And as we go from x going from a to b, we're going to get smaller and larger shells. And when we add them all together, that's when we'll have the total volume. So how do we do that? Well, last time what we did was we went from a to b of the area of the shape dx. And we are, even though this is being rotated around the y-axis, we've got to think about this a little differently this time. With the shell method, if it's rotated around the y, you still integrate in terms of dx. So it's the opposite. It's not like the disk and washer method where if you spun it around the x, then you did the integration dx. In this case, if you're spinning it around the y, you're integrating with dx. But the question is, what is the area of that weird outside of a cylinder? Well, let's look at this a little differently. Let's take the outside of that cylinder and we're gonna slice it right down one of the sides. And we're gonna flatten it out into, well, a giant rectangle. The height of that rectangle is just f of x. But if the height is f of x, what is the distance around the bottom of that cylinder, the circumference of the circle? The circumference is pi d or 2 pi r. So let's leave it in terms of 2 pi r. But now we realize that radius is actually just x. So this is actually not that crazy. The volume using the shell method is the integral from a to b of f of x, 2 pi x dx. That is the height of the rectangle times the width of the rectangle, or f of x for the height, and 2 pi x for the width. All right, let's do an example. All right, so we have r, this region r, described by rotating the function f of x equals 1 over x around the y-axis. Down to the x-axis is the region r that we're looking at, and we want to find the volume over the region 1 to 3. So all we're going to do is we graph the line, get an idea of what it looks like, know that we're going to be rotating around the y-axis. So we're going to do this by method of shells. The volume is equal to 2 pi times the integral from a to b, f of x, times x dx. In this case, f of x is 1 over x. And when we multiply that by x, we just get 1, which is the easiest integral. Well, maybe e to the x is a little easier, but this is pretty close to it. And we end up, when we finish the integration, evaluating it at 1 and 3, we get that this is equal to 4 pi, and it would be unix cubed because we're talking about volume. So we could also rotate this around the x-axis and then integrate with respect to y, and we would use something very similar to the disk and shell method. But again, with the disk and shell, if we spun it around the y, we integrate it with respect to y. If we spun it around the x, we integrate it with respect to x. This is the opposite. If we rotate around x, we integrate with y. If we rotate around y, we integrate dx. Okay, that leads to this question. When do we use disk? When do we use shells? Well, first of all, the difference between disk and washer, if you're going to have two separate lines, um, chances are you're going to be using the washer method because that means you're going to have a cavity inside. But 
if you're rotating around the x-axis, you've got three choices. You either have the disk method, the washer method, or shells. We've got the three equations here for each one of these. The question is, how, how do you know which one to use? First of all, if there's a way to integrate without breaking things into two separate integrals, do that. It's easier. And in general, just look for the simpler path. And if you try it and you're thinking, this isn't going so well, try again with a different method. It might work. And remember, we could also look at things rotating around the y-axis in these same ways. We would have the disk, the washer, and the shell. There's not a really good way to say, oh, if this is the situation, always use this method. Quite honestly, it's going to be playing around with the different methods and trying to figure out which one is easiest. There's not always one way of doing things, but there is an easier way.